We're back on the trailer where finally the weather is glorious. All right, back once again, like a renegade master. And I've decided that the frame, the wooden frame that I spent oh so long building and getting right and all that sort of shit, and ultimately didn't work, uh, is going. That presents a slight issue in that I can't get the telehandler back, so. <laughs> yeah. I haven't made it easy for myself, let's put it that way. Definitely not. That will obviously drop the box down this much, which will make it less wobbly. Let's cut this arch out, I think. See what we got beneath, and I've got until about there. So. Yeah, looks about right. So what we're gonna do now, because this is a very technical channel, and because so many of you watch this for, engineering and educational purposes we're gonna we're gonna do this uh, methodically and mathematically start about there and we're gonna do about that yeah what's in there ah it's the floor The rest is hollow. This is good. Because of the wooden frame, I never bothered removing the mounting points or eyelets, whatever you want to call them. But now the frame's going, so must they, or they'll pierce through the floor. And yes, I'm in flip flops. Yes, I sting and injure myself a lot. And no, I didn't learn. Goddamn toe. I'd now removed all the fouling metal bits and wooden screws from the frame this side, so I could lower it down and go for the other side. Oh, there are just stinging nettles everywhere. Ah. That's all the rings now off, apart from that one down there. Just gotta go and knock it off. Now I've got to figure out a way of carefully leaving the two long posts in and then one at a time. Hmm, saying that. Oh, it's hard. Obviously, if, if I take one out and then it's jacking up on... No, I don't have to lift it this much. I have to lift it to an extreme, do I? Let's just figure it out. Let's just go for it. Safety first and all that, Lance. You, um... Well, yeah, you just, you just stay there and do exactly what you're doing. Good, good boy. This old step I've kept on because it could have been handy, but it's just not gonna work. This is actually going back a little bit, I think. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just not, not ideal. It's big, it's heavy, it's got all this bracketry that just isn't needed. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of it. There'll be less tail weight, and uh, it's just not in the way anymore because it's constantly in the bloody way trying to get in. sunscreen Ugh. I'm in a good t-shirt this is brand new How? Oh. Piss off! Of course, I use different screws in different places. It's just the way I roll, isn't it? Oh. With the wooden cross members now detached from the chassis rails, if you like, I can start to drop these out, remove the top piece from the bottom, and then put the bottom piece back, as I can still use this as a mounting point. 
Not an easy job though. I'd put screws everywhere. The wood was compressed by the box, but I didn't want to lift it up because I was under it. And I kept getting stung by stinging nails. Oh, I've got to try and separate these two and then put this one back on with the wire in it. There we go. Then you get Okay, that's the cross members gone. Now it's just for the two uh, beams here. So this one's already off, it's jacked up. But I've got to be really, really careful here because if I take this off and let this down too fast, that could go either way and God knows what could happen. Ever since it fell off the blocks when I was trying to lift it the first time, I'm just really sort of, Whoa. So I'm gonna go and put the dog away. So he's a mile from this. And then, um, yeah, just, just see, see how we get on. Okay, that's just now floating. Get it down, shall we? Okay, this is the one. If I lift this too high up and it starts to slide, there'll be no stop in it. I've got to lift it up just enough to be able to get the, the wood out and then come straight back down. The box is lifting up, but the chassis is starting to go with it, making the whole thing lean precariously. One wrong move here and the box will be sliding into the plants, ricocheting the frame into my face, and that'll probably be game over for the both of us. And that's it. That's better. Looks a bit more meant. Still needs a little bit of adjustment that way. Now obviously I don't have any machinery here today. So I'm gonna have to try and improvise. Ooh, that went better than intended. <laughs> All right. I was just doing that for piss take. Oh yeah. With a few more bits of jiggery pokery on the front and back, I managed to get it square onto the frame. I can't believe that worked. The power of leverage. With the day drawing to a close, I whipped off the wheels to take with me, had a clear up and shut up shop. Oh, that's about it for today. Um, can't believe how fast the time's gone actually. Yeah, Joe's and Mick are on their way out now, so. I'm going to leave this be for a little while. Um, a few things to do this week, so this will just have to sit and wait. But I've just took the tyres off it because they are not great. They've got a few cracks in them. And although the tread's amazing on them, which is a real shame, um, now that it's got this on it, I, I don't trust them. So they're getting swapped. Right, let's get packed up and off we go. Oh, right, just uh, dropped the tyres off. I've had a nightmare today. Turns out the wheels are an old, very weird size and nobody stocks the tyres anymore. So I went to four different places, they're all either saying they can't get them in or charging me ridiculous prices. 
for the last one, um, that you can get them in and fitted for tomorrow morning. Um, and they were 50 something pounds each, so that'll do. So that's that job done. On my way back past, I'll go and swing by and grab them tomorrow. Um, I've got until two to wait for the aluminium, because the aluminium I've had cut for the, um, to cover up the arches. Uh, and now I'm just here at Jackson's of Old Arley. I'm gonna go and get some other bits. This car park's really busy and I'm getting stared at every time I put the camera on. I'm actually here, just up the road, um, is where I picked Amber up, Arley Medical Services. So I might even pop in there in a minute and see if they're in and uh, show them what I did to their van. I only come in with a few items in mind to get, but Jackson's do everything. So much so I managed to cancel an Amazon order. Which I like, because Jackson's is a family run company. Amazon is the devil. So, the items I managed to get today. Hey, I do love this shot, but it's dangerous. Absolutely. Everything. everything. It's just the best shot ever. Right then. Let's see if they're in. I remember driving here to view Amber like it was yesterday. It was winter, so cold, wet and dark early. I drove there in my minivan and my all drum brakes decided to fail on the way into Old Ali, which is a large hill, and I nearly died. So when I arrived to see the fully fledged ambulance that is now my van, I was a little shook up. All the questions and technical things I wanted to ask that didn't happen. I just walked around the van, had a play with the siren, looked in the back that was pitch black because the batteries didn't work and said thanks. I don't think the owner at the time thought I was the least bit interested. And with the eBay sale being the last ditch attempt to sell the van, Amber was destined for the scrapyard. Kind of funny when you think what she's done since. They're in. It's a shame. That is the ambulance that replaced this one. Another time maybe. Pop back in. Next stop was to pick up my aluminium. I had it cut to size so I could transport it and strapped it down to the roof deck. That weekend was the Overlander show and then we were back to Amber East. Go on then, walk in. The following week I was back with all the new bits that I'd bought but most importantly the trailer's new shoes. have come from uh, a lovely couple, uh, Jonathan and Leah. Uh, I met them a few times and uh, saw them at the Overlander show and they're upgrading the boxes for their Overlander. I never did manage to see them again at the show, it all got a bit mad but on the last day the boxes arrived outside the van so thank you very much guys they're gonna come in really handy in the old tool shed and of course new tyres, no more cracked nastiness and uh, <laughs> They sort of lost them in the workshop the day I went to pick them up, so that was a bit of a palaver. But uh, here they are, all done and dusted. Get okay, wheels back on it. And also, different jockey wheel to fit. Unfortunately, the first one didn't, which means I don't get the cool off-road tyre anymore, but never mind. Some of them, because they're actually a requirement on a trailer. And uh, the bigger sized arches, because I've had to keep that one because I mullered it a bit. Um, I did manage to take the other one back. And yeah, for a pound extra, you get the next size up, so let's see how those guys fit. Legs down, wheels on. Not a lot of weight over there. 
it needs more weight coming towards the front. But that is pretty well balanced. Yeah. Now the jockey wheel starts working. Ah, oh, well, it's old anyway. Fast improvement. these which were double the length because when I had the frame uh, so now I just have to go ahead and knock all them down to half the length and then I wanted to use some uh, nylocks but obviously being coach bolt heads um, that ain't gonna work so I use these but then double them up and thread lock them I went around the box drilling holes through the floor and directly into the chassis sinking the coach bolts through and bolting the whole thing together. In total it had four mounts either side but I also added some screws through the floor into the remaining cross sections just for good measure. And next was a job I've been dying to do from the very start giving it a lick of paint and getting it into company colours. three coats. The company I buy it from just watered it right down, stripped all the quality out of it. It's annoying really. That took one coat and most of that is still the original coat. Ooh, Robin. A little disheartened with the paint I moved on to something else to let it dry and see how many coats it's going to take. To help start moving some weight towards the front I was building a bracket so that I could mount the spare wheel onto the A-frame. The bracket is actually one of the old light mounts that I've just managed to reuse. I also managed to recycle a lot of the wood from the frame by building a little, I don't know what you'd even call it, deck, basket, a wooden feature at the front. Painting was still open and the brush still wet, so I thought, sod it, let's just get the whole thing in at least one coat. But yeah, it's gonna need at least three, so I'll have to get another tin of paint. Bonus of this though means I can give the van another touch up and have plenty to spare.
which I can't do because I've run out. But, uh, at least it's not white. Whilst the paint dried, I got on to fit in the auxiliary socket. Barring a switch for the orange light, I don't have much planned for this just yet. But with the cables fed inside on both the van and the trailer, it's future proofed. I can just add things at my leisure. But I mean, mostly I've just got a bit of a thing for symmetry. <laughs> now I've just got to decide where the electrics are coming in and going. And I'm debating here. Could do batteries, fuse boxes, all sort of crap in here. Because I don't think I might put a gas bottle in here, but it's sort of doubtful. Um, yeah, I don't know. Look inside. Mm, See, so you got down here, but could be boxed in there, and it is where where most of the wiring is coming from. There's a hole there, ready for the cable. Yeah, I think for the sake of, I'm gonna keep this, and I probably will end up putting some form of stove in there, just for shits and giggles. Yeah, so I'll leave that open, and I'll put the batteries down there. I think there's not a lot going on down down there. Um, it's accessible. Yeah, that'll do. Now I had my location for all the electrics and power stuff, I started feeding all the wires into that area. And while I was at it, I got onto connecting up all the rear lights. Thanks to some corrupt footage, I lost the clips of fitting the lights and a few other bits. But these lights are ugly as hell, so they don't last very long. Lights on. Pull the van over, hook it up, check the lights, and if they work, it's the first trial run. Oh. <laughs> the side locker doors lock doesn't lock. So I come up with a really high tech solution. Right hand down. Yeah. Just a quick little pull in it. Oh, it's on. I say, have they worked? No, they work. We haven't had to faff at all. No, no, that was seamless. <laughs> I haven't even rigged up the orange light for its maiden voyage. Look at how amazing it looks. It's crazy. Yeah. That's gonna look great, isn't it? Oh, well, there's a sight. This was it, the first test run of everything, now it's all bolted together. I was a little apprehensive, to say the least. Even though confident in what I'd built, you just never know with these things, do you? Jez's driveway gave it its first initial test, bouncing the life out of it. But to be honest, most of the bounciness is because there's no real weight to it. With my old GoPro strapped to the back of the van to monitor what's going on with it, I set onto the main road. But because it's my old GoPro. Clear. 
I pulled in Sharpish to diagnose the problem and whilst doing so, come across another one. Ironically, a few days later, a guy that's a BT employee commented in and told me these doors don't like to stay closed. Right, that's not good. I found out firsthand. I couldn't diagnose my tugging issue here, so I decided to turn back. But my suspicion was it was the dampener on the coupling. With it being an old unit, chances are it's had it. If the dampener's gone, the trailer's at free will, sliding up and down the shaft and applying its own brakes. I'm pretty sure that is the brakes. The hitch is just letting it do what it wants. But the wheels are taking the weight, it's not looking too all over the place. Actually, looking quite nice. I just hope that ribbon on the tied on the roof, the doors has kept it. I definitely need to look it into. Upon returning, I found the GoPro had shat itself, so I turned it back on and had a bit of a test on the coupling. Just pulled in, and the main reason I got rid of the GoPro is because it was shit. It just turned off the second we drove out of the gate, so there is no footage of the uh, trailer doing its thing. But with the camera now back on down the driveway, you can see the trailer doing its thing. Every time it moves forward on the shaft, it applies the brakes, slides backwards and smacks the end cap, creating the tug. Chances for getting spares for this old coupling are slim, so I'm going to be looking down the route of replacement. Yeah, it's um, didn't have any, anything to worry about with the old cap touching the van, did I? No, no, no. Really? No. No. How was it on the road? Stable-ish? Yeah, apart from the snatching. Yeah. And it was definitely the hitch because I kept feeling the brake supply. And it yeah. was like, ooh, yeah, ooh, ooh. Um, but yeah, it was lovely. And it wasn't too bouncy. It sort of just stayed true. Yeah, all in all, as maiden voyage goes, not too bad. I've been flashing my back doors at people is all. Yeah, oh. that's, I mean, that's, if that's all you've got to work around, then it's good day. Yeah. I was so nervous. Literally pissing with sweat. <laughs> like, expecting to watch that because that's all I can see in the back is that cap just disappear off into the distance. Uh, yeah, yeah. As the trailer applies its own brakes on its snatch cable and just like, yeah, bye. Flips into the hedge. <laughs> Feeling a little disheartened, I pulled the van down and got the trailer back in position to park. Whereas, oh damn it, the doors are open again, and got it parked back where it needed to be. So yeah, safe to say I've still got a lot of work ahead of me, but I'm glad this test is at least out of the way. I know what I've got to fix, and I know that despite those issues, it actually tows really nice. Back as you are, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Down a little bit. Okay, yeah. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming, keep coming. Whoa! Perfect. Yeah. No, it's full frame now. <laughs> Oh wow! And the doors open again. Yeah. Was that just from there to there? Yeah. Sons of bitches. Yeah, that needs some yeah. fettling. Another worry of mine was that there's just too much weight towards the rear, meaning I'd have to slide the whole box forward. But most of the weight in the box is actually towards the front, meaning where it's sat right now is its perfect position. And now I know roughly where all the heavy stuff's going in it, I know that it'll balance out nicely. Just to demonstrate how balanced it is, 